So these are two different fish. The one in the top right was caught by me here in New Jersey. All right. The one in the bottom left was caught in North Carolina by someone in my discord. All right. These are the same fish or maybe not. So what we're going to talk about is how new species come into existence. Uh, because we are in the process of witnessing the creation of a new species going on right now in your lifetime. I mean, lots of new species are coming into existence, but this is one really cool specific example. So what are these? This here is a tessellated darter, and this in the bottom left is a Johnny darter. As of right now, science says that they are different species, but it's kind of debated. So they were once subspecies, which means they were in the same species, and nowadays they're considered two distinct species. Uh, so if you don't know what that is, don't worry. So what is a subspecies? A subspecies just means that you have two fish which could be classified as species, but they don't actually uh, reproduce together for one reason or another. And when I tell you these definitions, you need to understand that they are extremely loose. Like the definition of a species and the definition of a subspecies is so debated that it's really hard to come up with something that in incorporates everything. So in general, a species is something that can create viable offspring. So it can have babies and those babies can have babies, right? So if two fish can have babies and those babies are still able to have babies, those are considered the same species, okay? However, sometimes you have two things that could breed, they just don't, you know? So they might be too far away or maybe for some reason they've developed different mating patterns. You know, they have a different preference so they never actually end up breeding. And that's when you have subspecies because they technically are the same species. They could interbreed and create viable offspring. They just don't, all right? And that's what we used to consider these guys, the tessellated and the Johnny darter. Nowadays, we actually consider them their own species, but how much sense does that definition actually make? So first of all, how do you tell the difference, right? So what are we looking at here? Is this a tessellated darter or is this a Johnny darter? You guys guess in chat. Do you think this is a tessellated darter or a Johnny darter? For reference, the top right is a tessellated, the bottom left is a Johnny darter. Take a guess. Let's see if anyone can from chat can get it correct. Johnny, Johnny, Tesla. Okay, it's tessellated. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Five guesses for Johnny, six Johnny. Johnson tessellated. So according to chat, about 80% of chat said that this is a Johnny darter. A um, couple of you guys said tessellated and a couple of you guys said that it is uh, a hybrid between the two of them. How do you actually tell the difference? Do you use like the location that you get them? Do you use physical traits? Do you use behavior? Well, as you can see, I am actually the leading observer of tessellated darters in the world. This is the list of people who have observed tessellated darters in the wild and put them on iNaturalist. And you'll see myself at the top. So as the world's leading observer of tessellated darters, I can tell you that th this fish, you don't tell the difference. You just don't. You like all of your guesses were futile because you just with the naked eye, you just can't tell the difference, right? Theoretically, there are some, you know, some ray counts that are different uh, between the two species. However, in general, that's it, a pretty unreliable tactic. Rays, you know, differentiate a lot. And especially when you're looking at a single individual, it's really hard to look at stuff like that. Someone said, don't the tails look different? No. Uh, this is a this is a, a damage. <laughs> this is not actually like this is he has a rip in his tail. Their tails look the exact same normally. This guy just has a rip in his tail. So they are genetically, uh, you know, distinct enough that in a lab, you know, if you do genetic work, you can actually tell the difference between them. But just telling them apart by sight is, is not really possible. Uh, you'd have to look at some really close characters and then even then you wouldn't be sure. So what does science think? Oftentimes we're like, okay, so what the hell does science think about this? Because they probably know they've been doing genetic work. Well, back in 1947 for the first time, someone said they're, the, they're different species just by looking at them physically and counting their traits. And then someone in 1958 was like, actually there's a subspecies. So the tessellated darter is just in the same species as the Johnny darter. And then someone in 1967 said they're different species, but we can only really know that in New York, Virginia, North Carolina. And then someone said, actually, in a lot of places, they're hybrids, but they're still different species. So this one is claiming that they can produce viable offspring yet are different species. And that makes you question the defini definition of a species. So if they can produce fertile offspring together, 
aka hybrids that are creating that are having babies 7.6 percent of the time how are they not you know subspecies rather than species then someone said that in, in canada you should probably all call them johnny darters because tessellated darters are probably a subspecies and then basically the final conclusion still in 1984 was that where their ranges overlap, they're less genetically distinct, but they're still distinct species. So basically, if they live in the same place, they hybridize and then they become one species, basically. But in places where they look live, you know, apart from each other, they're actually fairly genetically distinct. So what is really going on? We are seeing the process of speciation. This is how new species come into existence. You were here. You are witnessing the creation of a new species. Uh, essentially, whether they're an actually a species right now and where that's taking place, because there's actually probably some places in the world where they've been completely separated for a long time and they're actually becoming distinct species. And then there's some places where their ranges still overlap. And so they're still interbreeding and they're basically still the same species at that point. So what we're at right now is a weird middle ground where in some places they're new species, they're different species. In some places, they're probably just the same species, subspecies of each other, and they're differentiating slowly. So what they are right now doesn't really matter because probably in the next couple hundred years, maybe even the next hundred years, maybe even in your lifetime, there will be Johnny Dart and tessellated darters, which absolutely cannot, cannot reproduce. So how does stuff like this happen? How did we get to this new species? Basically what happens is there's some kind of mutation, some kind of something that leads to a genetically distinct fish. So the original here is Johnny darters. So we had a bunch of Johnny darters in existence, and then there was a mutation that led to the tessellated darter. And that mutation, even if it only slightly differed in, you know, how it affects the survivability of the fish, left them to be living in slightly different areas and to be acting slightly different and having slightly different morphology. And at first it doesn't really matter because they can still breed and everything. And so a lot of times what happens is mutations come about and then they get bred out pretty immediately, right? So like a new fish will come about. So say the tessellated darter evolved and it has these new fin counts and it looks slightly different. And then it just breeds with the normal, you know, it just breeds with the normal population. Then it's back to normal and then no one really cares. But if those mutations are able to last a generation or two and it continues to breed with only other individuals which have those mutations, you start to create distinct populations. And so if they're living in different places, they're breeding in different ways and they're looking different, you eventually start to get species. And that is what we've created here. We have speciation. They are slowly separating. Right now, there are some places where they both live where they're basically still the exact same thing. And then there's some places like really far apart where you can't find, like say for example, here in New Jersey. Here in New Jersey, we have no Johnny darters. We have only tessellated darters. So if you look at a tessellated darter in New Jersey, and then you look at a Johnny darter somewhere where there's no tessellated darters, you're only going to find that they're pretty genetically distinct. They might still barely be able to reproduce, but they're genetically distinct. And probably soon within the next couple hundred years of you know evolution, the next couple generations, uh, they're going to be genetically distinct that they aren't able to breed anymore. And then they're going to be their own species. And that's pretty cool. So the final conclusion is, are they the same fish or not? And uh, the answer is, doesn't really matter because they will be. Almost assuredly, history has shown us time and time again that this will happen. Explain the diagram, please. Uh, so basically what this is talking about is whether they overlap. So allopatric, parapatric, pyropatric, and sympatric. Sympatric means they have the exact same range. They live in the same place. Allopatric, um, means that they don't live in the same place. So when a new species comes about allopatrically, it just means that there's some kind of like barrier that forms. So say like they both live in a river. So say like a fish lives in a river and then a big wall is built in the middle of the river and they're redirected elsewhere. Now those fish are completely separated, right? Well, they're going to slowly become new species as they are only breeding with each other on one side of the wall and then the others on the other side of the wall are only breeding with each other. So that's how you get a new species in allopatric. And that's pretty easy. There's just some kind of barrier form. Then these things get separated. This happens a lot with islands, right? If you're an animal on an island and you can't leave that island, right, then you're going to slowly become more genetically distinct from your ancestors who are living elsewhere, say, on the mainland. Parapatric is when, you know, a new niche comes about and uh, a new species goes to uh, 
goes to occupy that niche to say like there's a new food source and they want you know something evolves with the ability to utilize that food source uh, so they're going to occupy that niche but they're not in the same community anymore then there's also the occupying that niche but in the same community which is parapatrick and then sympatrick is they're in the exact same spot they live in the same space and there's some sort of you know genetic mutation that causes them to not be able to interbreed um, some stuff that happens like this is sometimes there's a mutation in behavior. So if you guys didn't know, animals are really specific about how they breed. They have like breeding techniques and they have, you know, behavior and stuff like that. And so animals oftentimes won't be able to breed with an animal that doesn't have the same behavior as it. Even if they could interbreed, if one of them is like only breeds during the spring and the other one only breeds during the fall, well, it's like, what are you going to do? they're not going to be able to breed because they're not going to be, you know, ready at the same time. And so sometimes you can have a mutation that leads to them no longer being able to breed. And that can create a distinct population, even though they're living in the same place. That's the St. Patrick. I mostly just put this diagram up just to, you know, show the process of speciation. I think I Googled speciation and this is what came up. But uh, I'll explain it since someone was interested. I'm glad you guys found it cool. I hope you enjoyed Fish Friday or Fish Fruise Day. <laughs> look forward to more i'm gonna be doing this more often and if you're interested a lot of these topics i'm talking about in advance in the ichthyology channel in the discord uh, with the people in there wow.